Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo are the two finest footballers of a generation. Anyone with even a fleeting interest in football can recognise that fact, and they are also two of the greatest players of all time. To say anyone from this era could have been as good as them for as long as them is a pretty bold claim then, but had I titled this video, 7 players who could have been really good over the last 10 to 15 years, I'm not sure how many people would watch it. It's well recognised that the exploits of both Messi and Ronaldo have probably helped push the other on even further in their careers. So essentially, I wanted to ponder the idea of which other players could have, if not match them, really pushed them on and made the Ballon d'Or podiums a little more unpredictable. And I think I have found seven players who could have done just that. With that in mind, I limited the seven to only players who are within a five-year age range of Messi at the young end, so 28, and Ronaldo at the older end, so 40 which means there'll be no Kylian Mbappe or Erling Haaland, and equally, there'll be no Ronaldo Luiz Nazario de Lima or George Best, just players from the same or similar generation. All of these players, I feel, could have become serious world-class talents for extended periods of time were it not for injuries, attitude problems, or other external factors. Without further ado then, here are seven footballers who could have come close to Messi and Ronaldo. Mario Goetze we start this seven in a fairly obvious place as far as I'm concerned, and it's worth noting that when Mario Goetze first broke through at Borussia Dortmund, he was nicknamed the German Messi. Goetze ended up doing something neither Messi or Ronaldo have yet done in scoring a goal in and winning a World Cup final, which just so happened to be against Messi's Argentina. Goetze was just 22 when he scored that goal and became a German hero, but it has essentially been a downhill struggle for him ever since. In truth, Goetze's peak probably came during the final season of his first stint with Borussia Dortmund, in which he flourished under Jurgen Klopp, scoring 16 goals as a 21-year-old as probably the best young player on earth at that time. It seemed as though there was nothing the youngster couldn't do, comfortable playing on either flank or through the middle, possessing pace, flawless technique, and a sharp eye for both the pass and for a goal. Bayern Munich triggered his release clause for 37 million euros, in what seemed like a bargain for a man destined to win the Ballon d'Or before he hung up his boots. Goetze had two good seasons in Bavaria, but they weren't quite as scintillating as his best form at Dortmund, and it appeared as though he was just starting to stagnate. In truth, Goetze's early stagnation and even more severe subsequent decline has been the result of a concoction of bitterly unfortunate injuries and health problems. In 2017, Goethe was diagnosed with myopathy, a muscular disorder preventing his muscles from functioning properly, and frequent muscle injuries have plagued him for more than half a decade. Goethe left Dortmund for the second time at the end of last season, and his next club remains unknown, at least at the time of this recording. Wayne Rooney Right, I want you to just hear me out on this one, because I'm deadly serious in what I'm about to say. Wayne Rooney could have been just as good as Cristiano Ronaldo. Laugh away, but it's the truth, and I make no apologies for stating it. Rooney is one of the most phenomenally talented teenage footballers that we have seen in Europe over the past 20 years, and when you compare Rooney and Ronaldo side by side, at the ages of 17, 18, or 19, even the most ardent of Portugal or Sporting Club de Portugal fans wouldn't be able to claim that Ronaldo was the superior footballer. It was only when both players were in their early 20s that Ronaldo overtook Rooney, and then opened up a rather enormous gulf between the two over the next 10 to 15 years. It's important to remember that Rooney is a year younger than Ronaldo, and whilst the event's star remains one of the most lethal finishers in world football, Rooney is now a player coach at Derby County in the Championship. Clearly, Ronaldo is a freak of nature, and given Rooney is England and Manchester United's all-time leading scorer, it would be ludicrous to suggest that he wasted his talent or lacked professionalism. Rather, Rooney is just a mere mortal, a phenomenally talented mere mortal who trained hard but didn't live with an SAS-style dedication to the sport like Ronaldo has. That is what began separating the two in their early 20s, and that's what has resulted in a huge gap between their ultimate careers and legacies, despite the fact that Rooney still had a magnificent career. Gareth Bale Possibly, maybe, just arguably you could suggest the most obvious inclusion in this entire seven, Gareth Bale, is one of only two or three players who at one time looked as though he could make a challenge to rival Messi and Ronaldo's dominance of the European game. Again, such suggestions may seem ludicrous in hindsight, but they were rooted in fairly reasonable arguments back in 2013. When Gareth Bale burst through at Tottenham in the 2010-11 season, he really burst through. 
Bale essentially ended one of the finest right backs of a generation's career at the highest level, tearing Mike on two shreds in the Champions League in a game that would define his next few years at White Hart Lane. In his last season in North London, Bale put in what I would call at least one of the 10 best Premier League seasons a player has ever had, and he was only 23 years old. He scored 26 goals in 42 games, but more than that, Bale was influencing the totality of Tottenham's play, he was beating players at will, and he appeared to be unstoppable in full flow. There was more than a touch of Ronaldo circa 2006-07 about him, and it was little surprise Real Madrid were willing to make him the most expensive footballer on earth at the time. Unfortunately, at Real, Bale has suffered injuries and club conflict, and when Ronaldo finally departed, he was unable to step up to the mantle. Bale has had a sensational career, but his last four years, which should have been among his best, have been an injustice given his talent. Michael Owen Anyone who has never watched Michael Owen play before the turn of the millennium doesn't realise just what an incredible footballer he was, and could have been were it not for a string of heartbreaking muscle injuries. The perception of Michael Owen now is almost of a poacher, someone who knew exactly where the goal was, but didn't offer much else. The teenage Michael Owen was something quite different. In fact, I would liken a teenage Michael Owen to a teenage Kylian Mbappe with a little bit more on the top. His goal against Argentina at the 1998 World Cup, in which he humiliated world-class players at the age of 18, and which I suspect you have all seen, was typical of Owen at that time. He was lightning quick, his movement was superb, and he could beat players with ease. Owen really was frightening to watch in those early years, and to score 23 goals in a season which began when you were 17 is practically unheard of. Whilst most people think injuries plagued Owen's latter years, which is quite true, it was actually a horrible hamstring injury suffered at Ellen Road in 1999, when Owen was still only 19, that ended his time as the animal that he once was. He still had four more excellent years at Liverpool and put in some great performances for England, but that original injury at 19 deprived us of what I've no doubt would have been the greatest English footballer of my lifetime at least, and someone who would have won more than just one Ballon d'Or. Hatem Ben Arthur There are a lot of players who people talk about as having been naturally gifted. Oftentimes, they can be somewhat overblown, but that is not the case when talking about Hatem Ben Arthur. I once had the chance to interview a former Leon Academy graduate who came through the youth ranks at the club alongside Ben Arthur, Benzema and others, and he struggled to put into words just how good Hatem Ben Arthur was at that age. What a lot of people don't realise is that Ben Arthur was viewed as a prodigy before he'd even started studying for his baccalaureate. From the age of 15, Ben Arthur was essentially followed everywhere by TV cameras, and the expectations of him were enormous. I remember when he signed for Hull City on loan, and we were ecstatic. The prevailing view at that time was that Alan Pardew was the cause of Ben Arthur's struggles at Newcastle, following an absolutely sublime debut campaign. And let's face it, Alan Pardew is the type of man to get into an argument with the trolley outside of Asda, so such a narrative seemed rather believable. However, I've probably never seen anyone lazier or more disinterested don the famous black and amber shirt in all my years supporting the mighty Tigers. Hatem Ben Arthur had magic in his boots. He could turn a game on its head in a split second. His touch, technique and vision were second to none, but he wasted it all. He probably could have been the closest thing to Lionel Messi if he had lived like a monk and trained like a warrior, but instead, he lived like Pete Doherty and trained like Meza Ozil. A crying shame, a generational talent, and we'll never know what could have been. Just look at what Karim Benzema has achieved with a fraction of his talent. Ronaldinho I know it seems as though he belonged to a different era, partly because he did, but like Michael Owen, Ronaldinho is just young enough to make this seven, aged 40, only five years older than Cristiano Ronaldo. You may recall, of course, that it was Barcelona's failed bid for David Beckham that led to Barcelona signing Ronaldinho from PSG, and in turn Manchester United, signing Cristiano Ronaldo from Sporting Club de Portugal. So Ronaldo and Ronaldinho are forever entwined in a significant set of transfers in the summer of 2003, if nothing else. Some might say that Ronaldinho did actually reach the level of Messi and Ronaldo at one stage, he just didn't stay there for very long, and there is certainly some credence to that argument. However, whilst Ronaldinho may have been just as, or even more joyous to watch than either Messi or Ronaldo in his prime, he was never as effective or ruthlessly efficient as this era's two finest footballers were at their scintillating best. For three or four seasons at Barcelona, Ronaldinho was just one of a kind. Watching him play football was like watching an artist who had mastered his craft and was now just playing around, entertaining himself as well as those in attendance. 
Whilst Messi and Ronaldo have remained extremely dedicated to their profession, for a decade and a half though, Ronaldinho fell out of love with football, having won it all in his early 20s. His attention seemed to drift as his love of partying took hold. Ronaldinho may never have become a Messi or Ronaldo, but his peak made many fall in love with the game, even if he fell out of love with it shortly after. Neymar I wouldn't say there was any strict order to this seven, but for some reason, I felt as though Neymar had to take top spot. Now, I have often stuck up for Neymar, heck, I even made an entire video defending some of the baseless accusations and undue criticism that has been aimed in his direction, so this may seem somewhat hypocritical. I don't see it that way though, since I've never claimed that Neymar is a model professional, in the mould of a Messi or Ronaldo, just that the idea that he doesn't care or is no longer world class is absurd. One could draw comparisons between Neymar and Hatem Ben Arfa in the sense that the spotlight was shone on both of them at such a young age, but whilst Ben Arfa fizzled out, Neymar became one of the greatest footballers of his generation. Indeed, for much of the Messi-Ronaldo era so to speak, Neymar has been the third best player in the world, and to be the third best player in the world in this era is just about as good as any mere mortal can get. However, I do feel Neymar had another level or another gear if he were wired slightly differently. Although he didn't make his international debut until he turned 18 at the age of 17, Neymar was already, I believe, one of the best players in the world. At 18, he scored 42 goals in a single season for Santos, and comparisons to Pele were inevitable. Neymar's peak, to date at least, was probably the 2014-15 campaign, in which he scored 39 goals for Barcelona and played a pivotal role in the Catalan Giants lifting the Champions League. He has continued to be brilliant for PSG, but he hasn't managed to win the Champions League or the Ballon d'Or, which are the barometers of success for someone so phenomenally talented who left a remarkable Barcelona team for not just a world record breaking fee, but for a world record destroying fee. Neymar is 28 now, and it seems highly unlikely that he will be remembered in the same bracket as Messi or Ronaldo. I would maintain, for now at least, that he is the third best player of this era and deserves praise, but were he tuned, like Messi or Ronaldo, he had the talent to really push those two, and it's a shame we never saw that. So that is it for today's video. Although there are many other players I could have included, Ricardo Cresma in particular, I felt was unfortunate to miss out. And some of your suggestions on Twitter included Ravel Morrison, although he would have been too young by my criteria, Eden Hazard, Fabio Pime, Mario Balotelli, Meza Ozil, Marco Royce, Bojan, Giuseppe Rossi, Joe Cole, and Adriano. Oh, and Danny Drinkwater. But I'm not entirely sure that was a serious suggestion. If Danny Drinkwater had a first-class attitude and avoided any injuries though, he might actually be as good as Danny Drinkwater was a few years ago. Thank you all for watching today's video, you know how much I appreciate your support, and if you enjoyed the video, then you are more than welcome, I would suggest even encouraged, to hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts as ever down below in the comments, double check to make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s, and if you're a mega fan of the channel, you can always find me on Twitter or Instagram at, at HITC7s on both platforms.